Hi everyone, and thanks for joining me back. In this lesson, we will focus on this part of the video. We will create this nice zoom in and zoom out animation. We will also learn about tools that will help us maintain the maximum quality while zooming. In addition, we will learn about a new type of layer called the adjustment layer and see how it can help us in our project. So now I want us to enter the pre-comp of the video and edit it from the inside. Look how convenient it is to mess with the video when I don't have all the layers that bother me here. Let's unhide these layers, because now, I don't need to hide them from the layers panel. Remember, we are still learning about the layer panel. And so now we will learn what this icon is, quality and sampling. Basically, it sharpens the layers. I will demonstrate this using this layer. I'll increase it for now so we can understand what's going on. I'll get a little closer. And here you will see as soon as I press, a certain sharpness appears. And if I press again, another sharpness will be added. Let's leave the sharpness like this and return the video to 100. As it was before. And now, let's try to do the same thing on a layer with frame blending applied. This is the layer for which we created slow motion with the help of the time stretch and activated the frame blending. So here I click and activate quality and sampling. Not too much going on, but if I press it again for maximum sharpness, you'll notice that the video looks blurry. This happens because there is frame blending on this layer. On layers, with frames blending applied, you should use only the initial sharpness. For a layer that does not have the frame blending, we will activate the maximum sharpness. But for a layer that has the frame blending activated, we will create the initial sharpness. Something to keep in mind when working with video. Especially in editing a video that has a zoom animation. Exactly like in our case. Now let's go back to the beginning. Set the preview to fit. And let's create the zoom in and zoom out animation as we saw in the example. In our case, the size of the original video file is 4K. That is, twice as much as full HD. The size of our composition here is full HD. This means that if we reduce the size of the video by 50%, it will be adjusted exactly to the dimensions of this composition. So let's select all the layers and open the scale parameter by shortcut S. We will reduce them manually. Or we will simply write 50 here. And now, we will create the zoom in and zoom out animation exactly from the moment when the slow motion starts as we know the slow motion happens in layer number three. We will make sure that no layer is selected, and we will press U to hide the scale parameter. And now, we will select only layer number three, open the scale of only this layer, and animate it. I will start the zoom animation right when this layer starts. I will stand here with the time indicator and set a keyframe to the scale parameter. At this point in time, it will be of size 50. I move forward with the time indicator to the middle of the layer and set a keyframe of 100 to the scale parameter. And here it is, we created a zoom in animation. So the layer goes from 50 to 100. This means that the layer here will increase until it reaches 100. And now, I will move forward with the time indicator to the end of the layer and bring the layer back to 50. So after this keyframe, the layer will decrease until it reaches the size of 50. Let's see what we got. Zoom in. And zoom out. Now let's change the keyframes to easy ease, using the F9 key. We can also change the velocity. Double click on one of the keyframes while holding the Alt key. Let's set the velocity to 85 by 85. In the graph, it will look like this. When the animation starts, it will increase slowly, and then at that point, the speed of the animation will increase. Let's see how it looks. I think it looks much better. 
And that's how we created a zoom in and zoom out animation. Now we will learn about a new type of layer called the adjustment layer. We will learn what it is and why it is good for us. In general, the adjustment layer is good in cases where we want to create a filter. I will explain what I mean. Don't do it with me. Just look. Let's say I want my video to be in black and white. So I'll select the layer I want to have the effect on. I'll go to effects and look for the effect called hue and saturation. I'll drag the effect onto the layer and change this property to minus 100. So far, everything is fine. But let's say I need this layer to be black and white too. I can, of course, copy the effect from this layer and paste it on it. I will have to do the same for all the other layers. And now, let's say that I need to make a change to the filter I created. The change is that now the filter should be like this, colorful. So I'll have to change it on each layer separately. This layer. And this layer too. It can take me a long time. If we want to create a certain filter, we should always think that we will have changes in the future. The customer can give a comment, or I won't like what I did and want to change it conveniently and quickly. In such cases, we need to use an adjustment layer. I will delete the effect from the layers and show you how it works. Now you can do it together with me. Right click, new, adjustment layer. And here I got an invisible empty layer, created exactly according to the size of the precomp I'm in. I will align it to the center. Now I can apply the same effect on the adjustment layer. Let's set it to minus 100. Now, everything that will be below the adjustment layer will be affected by it. This layer is in black and white. This one. This and this one. I didn't duplicate the effect on each layer. I just apply it to one layer. It's very convenient because now I control this filter from only one layer. Let's change the name to black and white filter then press enter. I can easily turn the filter off and on. And now, we will continue to improve our filter with additional effects. Like the curves effect. I'll drag the effect onto the adjustment layer, and here I see that another effect appears. I can close the first effect here. And now, let's adjust the curves effect. We will grab the white line and drag it down from here. And from here, we will drag it up. It gives a little more contrast to the video. Let's close it. And if we click on this icon, we can cancel the effect, so you can check how it looks with, or without it. Let's add another effect to improve the filter even more. This effect is called Levels. We'll drag the effect to the adjustment layer, and change the first parameter. We'll write 15 here. This adds even more contrast. And after I am satisfied with the filter I created, we see that it is active on all the layers that are under it. And that's the advantage of an adjustment layer. You can easily turn the filter on and off. Here I see an icon that has an effect on this layer, which means that you can turn off the filter we created from here as well. Okay, let's close the effect panel. And now, we will create an animation for the filter as it appears in the final video. At the moment of zoom, the video is colored. As I said in the first lessons, every parameter with a stopwatch icon can be animated. And as you see in the hue and saturation effect, there is a stopwatch. So I can decide and animate when there will be color and when there will not. Let's bring the time indicator to the beginning of this layer. This is also the exact moment when the zoom-in animation starts. So we'll stand here, 
select the adjustment layer and determine that at this point in time, the parameter will be minus 100. To see the keyframes we've created, we can press U. We see that there are keyframes in the parameter called channel range. This parameter belongs to the effect called hue and saturation. Now let's move forward with the time indicator and adjust the color animation to the zoom in zoom out animation. So I'll select this layer and press U to see its keyframes. That way, I can know exactly when to schedule the animation of the color. Let's determine that at this point in time, we will set the color to 20, and then at the end of the zoom out animation, the color will return to minus 100, meaning black and white. So now I have three keyframes. The last one is minus 100, meaning no color. In front of it is keyframe 20, meaning there will be color here, and the first one is minus 100, meaning no color. And now, I can change the keyframes to easy ease, and set the same velocity as the zoom in and zoom out animation. This is a great time to use the free script we installed Ease Copy. If you don't see it, you can go to the window, go down a little and open the script. So let's copy the three keyframes of the scale parameter and paste them on the keyframes we just created. Let's see how it looks. Great. Now is a good time to press Ctrl S to save the project. You can close the effects window. These layers and the video pre-comp. And now, I want us to return to the project panel. If you don't see the panel from here, you can click on the arrows here and select the project panel. And that's the end of the lesson. In the next lesson, we'll learn about the 3D world in After Effects. See you in the next one.